Dear students, I welcome you to yet another lecture on corporate law. The topic for today's lecture is debentures. What is meant by the term debenture? Debenture is the most important instrument and method of raising the loan capital by the company. A debenture is like a certificate of loan or bond evidencing the fact that the company is liable to pay a specified amount with interest. The objectives for today's lecture are to understand the meaning of the term debenture, to understand the modes of issue of debentures, to understand the various types of debentures, to understand the difference between shares and debentures. It is also to understand the remedies available to a debenture holder in case of default of payment. Dear students, we now come to the meaning of the term debenture. In simple words, a debenture is a unit of loan amount. When a company intends to raise the loan amount from the public, it issues debentures. A person holding debenture or debentures is called a debenture holder. The term debenture is derived from the Latin term debere, which means to borrow. A company may find it difficult to borrow large sums of money from a single lender. Therefore, it may split it up into several units and offer the public to purchase debentures. A debenture is thus a certificate of loan issued by the company to the holder of the debenture. It is undoubtedly a kind of a security. The term debenture is not a technical term. Justice Lindley observed in the case of British India Company versus RC, and I quote, What the correct meaning of debenture is, I do not know. Do not find anywhere any precise definition of it. We know that there are various kinds of instruments commonly called debentures. You may have mortgage debentures, which are charges of some kind on the property. You may have debentures which is nothing more than an acknowledgement of indebtedness. And you may have a thing like this, which is something more. It is a statement by two directors that the company will pay a certain sum of money on a given date and will also pay interest upon half yearly at a certain place upon production of certain coupons by the holder of the instrument. In another case of Levy versus Eberkoris company, the same learned judge described the meaning of the term debenture as, and I quote, the term itself imports a debt, an acknowledgement of a debt, and speaking of the numerous and various forms of instruments which have been called debentures without anyone being able to say that the term is incorrectly used. I find that generally, if not always, the instrument imports an obligation or a covenant to pay. This obligation or covenant is in most cases at present day accompanied by some charge or security." Unquote. Although the modern meaning of the term debenture is very wide, it goes too far to assert that every document creating or acknowledging indebtedness of the company is a debenture. So the term now used is of elastic nature. Just Chitty defined term debenture that it means a document which either creates a debt or acknowledges it and any document which fulfills either of these conditions is a debenture. Dear students, we now come to the statutory definition of debenture as provided in the Companies Act 2013. The term debenture has been defined in Section 2, Clause 30 of the Companies Act 2013. It says, debenture includes debenture stock, bonds and any other instrument evidencing a debt of a company whether constituting a charge on the company's assets or not. In the case of SR Steel Limited versus Grey Mercy Emerging Market Fund, the issue was whether the floating rate notes are debentures or not. The court held that the term note is wide enough to encompass instruments having different characteristics depending on whether issued in a consumer context as a commercial paper or in some other investment context. 
if notes are issued in commercial or consumer context, they will not be treated as securities, while those issued in the investment context would be. This can be ascertained on the basis of the circumstances surrounding the transactions. The transaction has to be examined to assess the motivations that would prompt a reasonable seller and buyer to enter into it. If the seller's purpose is to raise money for the general use of the business enterprise or finance substantial investment and the buyer is interested primarily in the profit the note is expected to generate, the instrument is likely to be a security. On the other hand, if the note is exchanged to facilitate the purchase and sale of a minor asset or consumer goods or to advance some other commercial or consumer purpose, such note cannot be classified as a security. Other factor to be examined is whether the note in question is an instrument which is common trading for speculation or investment and how it is viewed by the investing public. Palmer defined debenture as an instrument under seal, evidencing a debt, the essence of it being the admission of indebtedness. The term, as used in the modern commercial parlance, is of extremely elastic character. Indeed, no definition can help in all cases to know whether a particular document issued by a company is a debenture or not. We must look at the substance of the instrument itself and without the assistance of any precise legal definition form the best opinion of whether the instrument is or is not a debenture. The Bombay High Court appears to have acted on this principle in deciding Lakshman Bharamji versus Emperor in which the issue related to the sale of patron bonds. The court observed and I quote the main feature which in our opinion ten conclusively to show that the patron bonds are debentures are the acknowledgement of debt, the promise to return it, the fact that they form a continuous series bearing consecutive numbers. At the end, debenture is a name applied to certain types of documents evidencing an indebtedness which is normally but not necessarily secured by a charge over the property. The rights of the debenture holder therefore are simply contractual rights against the company coupled if the debenture is not a naked debenture, that is a debenture without charge with some rights against or all of the company's property. Whether or not there is a charge, the debenture is treated equally with the share as the object of the dominion. The company, instead of issuing individual debentures, evidencing separate and distinct debts may create one loan fund known as debenture stock, divisible among a class of lenders, each of whom is given a debenture stock certificate, evidencing the eloquent parts of the whole loan to which he is entitled. Debenture being a single thing which can be legally transferred only as one entity, debenture stock can be subdivided and transferred in any fraction which the holder wishes. Dear students, we now discuss the characteristics of debentures. Debentures have certain specific characteristics which are, number one, debentures are generally issued in a series, but a single debenture may also be issued in case of a sole lender of a company. Number two, Debenture is usually in the form of a certificate issued under the seal of the company. Number three, debenture is an acknowledgement of indebtedness. It usually provides for the payment of a specified sum at a specified date. Number four, debenture generally creates a charge on the undertaking of the company or on some assets of it. This is, however, not an essential characteristic and a debenture creating no charge is also perfectly legal. The holder of debentures is the creditor of the company and not its member. A debenture carries no voting rights at any meeting of the company. Dear students, we now discuss what is the need for debentures. Companies have frequently to borrow large sums of money. The loan requirement of a company may not therefore be met by a single lender. The loan may have to be split into several units, 
One very convenient method of doing so is to borrow by issuing debentures. For example, the sum to be borrowed is rupees 10,000. It may be divided into 100 units each of the value of 100 rupees. A lender may purchase as many units as he pleases. The company will certify the number of units he holds and that is the concept of a debenture. A debenture is therefore a certificate of loan issued by a company. It is also a type of a security. So the company has to resort to borrowings to raise funds for augmenting its financial resources. A trading company which carries on its business for profit motives has the implied power to borrow money unless forbidden to do so by the memorandum of association or the articles of association. In case of non-trading company, the power to borrow must be expressly provided in its memorandum or articles. The power to borrow money, whether expressed or implied, includes the power to charge the assets of the company by way of mortgage which provides security to the creditor. Dear students, we now come to the different kinds of debentures. Debentures can be classified, number one, from the security point of view. In this categorization, we have secured or mortgage debentures. These are the debentures that are secured by a charge on the assets of the company. These are also called mortgage debentures. The holders of secured debentures have the right to recover their principal amount with the unpaid amount of interest on such debentures out of the assets mortgaged by the company. The second category would be unsecured debentures. Debentures which do not carry any security with regard to the principal amount or unpaid interest are called unsecured debentures. They are also called simple debentures. Dear students, we can also classify debentures on the basis of redemption. In this categorization, we have redeemable debentures. These are the debentures which are issued for a fixed period. The principal amount of such debentures is paid off to the debenture holders on the expiry of such period or upon demand or after notice under the system of periodical drawings. Redeemable debentures may be reissued unless the articles prohibit their reissue or there is a resolution showing the intention of the company to cancel the redeemed debentures. These can be redeemed by annual drawings or by purchasing from the open market. Irredeemable debentures, also known as perpetual debentures, here no time is fixed for the company to repay the loan. Thus, the holder of an irredeemable debenture cannot demand repayment of his money so long as the company is a going concern and does not make default in the payment of interest. So, these are the debentures which are not redeemed in the lifetime of the company. Such debentures are paid back only when the company goes into liquidation. Dear students, we also classify debentures on the basis of convertibility. Convertible debentures are those debentures that can be converted into shares of the company on the expiry of pre-decided period. The term and conditions of conversion are generally announced at the time of issue of debentures. Section 71, Clause 1 of the Companies Act 2013 permits the conversion of convertible debentures into shares by a special resolution of the company. Non-convertible debentures. The debenture holders of such debentures cannot convert their debentures into shares. Dear students, we also classify debentures on the basis of priority. In this categorization, we have first debentures. These debentures are redeemed before other debentures. Second debentures. These debentures are redeemed after the redemption of first debentures. Another way in which we can categorize debentures is on the basis of record. Registered debentures. Registered debentures are those debentures in respect of which all details including names, addresses and particulars of holding of the debenture holders are entered in a register kept by the company. Such debentures can be transferred only by executing a regular transfer deed. Bearer debentures. 
Bearer debentures are those debentures which can be transferred by way of delivery and the company does not keep any record of the debenture holders. Interest on debentures is paid to a person who produces the interest coupon attached to such debentures. Dear students, we now discuss rights debenture. Recent trend of the companies is to offer debentures to the existing equity shareholders on the rights basis in proportion to their shareholding subject to a minimum of one debenture to each equity shareholder. The debenture holders are usually given option to apply for additional debentures in addition to the number of debentures they are entitled to subscribe. The allotment is, however, made on equitable basis with reference to equity shares held by the applicants. The shareholders may renounce the offer of rights debenture in favour of some other person or persons. Dear students, we now come to the distinction between shares and debentures. The first point of distinction between shares and debentures is on the basis of ownership. A share represents ownership of the company, whereas a debenture is only an acknowledgement of debt. A share is a part of the owned capital, whereas a debenture is a part of the borrowed capital. The second point of distinction between shares and debentures is on the basis of return. The return on shares is known as dividend, while the return on debentures is called interest. The rate of return on shares may vary from year to year depending upon the profits of the company, but the rate of interest on debentures is prefixed. The payment of dividend is an appropriation of profits, whereas the payment of interest is a charge on the profit and is to be paid even if there is no profit. The third point of distinction is on the basis of repayment. Normally, the amount of shares is not returned during the life of the company, whereas generally, the debentures are issued for a specified period and repayable on the expiry of that period. However, companies are permitted to buy back their shares after fulfilling certain conditions. Another difference between shares and debentures is on the basis of their voting rights. Shareholders enjoy voting rights, whereas debenture holders do not normally enjoy any voting right. We can also distinguish between shares and debentures on the basis of the rate of discount. We have to remember shares cannot be issued at a discount. The only category of shares which can be issued at a discount are sweat equity shares, whereas debentures can be issued at a discount. Another way of distinguishing shares and debentures is on the basis of security. Shares are not secured by any charge, whereas debentures are generally secured and carry a fixed or a floating charge over the assets of the company. One more way of distinguishing between shares and debentures is on the basis of convertibility. Shares cannot be converted into debentures, whereas debentures can be converted into shares if the terms of the issue so provide, and in that case, they are known as convertible debentures. Dear students, we shall now discuss the issue of debentures. The power to issue debentures can be exercised on behalf of the company at a meeting of the board under Section 179, Clause 3 of the 2013 Act. Further, Section 71 deals with the provisions relating to the issuance of debentures. The way in which a company issues debentures or units of debenture stock depends on whether they are subscribed for by one or a few persons or by a large number of subscribers. If the debenture holders are few in number, the negotiations will be private and will be conducted privately between the directors or an intermediary and the lenders. The commonest case of this kind is where the bank grants company overdraft facilities or makes a fixed term loan and takes a debenture secured by a floating charge on the company's assets and undertaking as a security. If the debenture or debenture stock units are to be issued to a large number of persons, the company will either issue a prospectus inviting the public to subscribe for them or will arrange for an issuing house or a firm of brokers or dealers to place them or to offer them for sale or the company will offer them to its own shareholders 
or existing debenture holders by letters of rights or provisional letters of allotment. If, in connection with the large-scale issue of debentures, letters of allotment are issued, the persons who hold them when they cease to be renounceable will complete registration application forms and surrender the complete letters to the company in return for debentures or debenture stock certificates in registered or bearer form. These documents must be issued to the persons entitled to debentures. Unless the debentures are issued in bearer form, the trust deed will require the company to keep the register of debenture holders in a form similar to its register of members. When the debentures are transferred, appropriate entries are made in the register showing the date of registration of each transfer, the amount of debenture held by the transferee and the amount, if any, retained by the transferor. A company cannot issue a prospectus or make an offer or invitation to the public or its members exceeding 500 for subscription of its debentures unless it has before such issue appointed one or more debenture trustees. A debenture trustee shall take steps to protect the interests of the debenture holders or redress their grievances in accordance with the prescribed rules. Dear students, we shall now discuss the charge which is created by a debenture. The first is mortgage. In order to secure the repayment of a loan, the creditor may require the debtor company to mortgage its immovable property. There is thus a debt and the relationship between the mortgager, that is the company, and the mortgagee is that of a debtor and a creditor. Companies quite often have to create a charge on the immovable property by mortgaging it to obtain loan. This definition makes it clear that there are three outstanding characteristics of a mortgage. Number one, interest in the property mortgaged terminates upon the performance of the obligation secured, that is payment of loan. The second is that the mortgagee has a right of foreclosure upon the mortgager's failure to perform. The mortgager has a right to redeem or regain the property on repayment of debt or performance of the obligation. Charges securing debentures. A charge may be defined as a security given for securing loans or debentures by a mortgage on the assets of the company. As discussed earlier, the power of a company to borrow money also includes the power to give security. Generally, the debentures and other borrowings of a company are secured by a charge on its assets. A charge is created when a property, whether existing or future, is agreed to be made available as a security for the repayment of debt. According to Section 2, Clause 16 of the Companies Act 2013, a charge means an interest or a lien created on the property or assets of a company or any of its undertakings or both as security and includes a mortgage. It is usual, though not essential, for debentures to create a charge on the company's assets. The charges which a company may create on its assets are of two kinds, namely the fixed charge and the floating charge. The first category is fixed charge. The normal concept of a mortgage is that it is created on some definite or specific assets. Such a mortgage is suitable for property which is more or less fixed. So fixed charges is made specifically to cover assets which are ascertainable and definite at the time of creating the charge, such as land, buildings, etc. The company's right to dispose of the property is temporarily suspended during the period it is charged or encumbered. In the event of the winding up of a company, a debenture holder or a creditor secured by a fixed or a specific charge shall be placed in the highest class of creditors. It is quite impractical where the assets to be charged are of a circulating or liquid nature. Such assets keep changing and a fresh charge has to be created every time they were turned over in the course of business. This would hinder business. Hence, there was the necessity of a charge which would not paralyze the company's business and at the same time give a safe security to the money lender. In the words of Gower, 
and I quote, the ingenuity of equity practitioners led to the evolution of an unusual but highly beneficial type of security known as a floating charge. The validity of such a charge was clearly recognized in the case of Panama, New Zealand and Australia Royal Mail Company RIP. In this case, a steamship company having power to do so issued mortgage debentures charging the undertaking and all sums of money arising therefrom with repayment at a specified time of money borrowed with interest in the meantime. Before the debentures became due, the company was wound up. The debenture holders wanted to enforce their security. The unsecured creditors disputed the validity of the charge on a fluid thing like the undertaking of a company. But it was held that the word undertaking had reference to all the property of the company, not only which existed at the date of issue of the debenture, but which might afterwards become the property of the company. Debenture holders therefore have a charge upon all the property of the company, past and future. Thus, floating charge is the charge of an ambulatory nature floating with the property it was intended to cover. It attaches to the subject charge in the varying conditions in which it happens to be from time to time. It is a charge which floats like a cloud over the whole assets from time to time falling within a generic description. It does not get attached to any specific property until it crystallizes. In the meantime, the company can use the asset charge in the ordinary course of its business. Dear students, we shall now discuss the crystallization of floating charge. A floating charge generally remains dormant until it crystallizes or becomes a fixed charge. A floating charge crystallizes into a fixed security under the circumstances that we are going to discuss now. Number one, when the company goes into liquidation. When the company ceases to carry on business on the happening of an event specified in the deed, when the debenture holders or creditors take steps to enforce this security, that is by appointing a receiver to take possession of the charged property, until a floating charge crystallizes into a fixed one, the company can deal with the property so charged in any manner it likes. Pointing out the principal characteristics of a floating charge, Gower observed, and I quote, it is a charge which floats over the assets from time to time falling within a generic description. A company borrowed money on the security of its stock in trade and when the time comes for the lender to enforce his security, he will do so by seizing whatever stock is there in the company's hands. When this happens, the floating charge becomes fixed or crystallized. Dear students, we shall now discuss the characteristics of a floating charge. The main characteristic of a floating charge which distinguishes it from a fixed charge as pointed out by Justice Romer in Yorkshire Woodcombers Association Limited Re is number one, it should be a charge upon assets both present and future. Number two, the class of asset charge must be one which in the ordinary course of business of the company would be changing from time to time. Number three, it should be contemplated by the charge that until some step is taken by the mortgagee, the company shall have the right to use the assets in the ordinary course of business. In Re Hi-Fi Equipment Company Limited, a charge was created on the fixed plant and machinery which would have been a fixed charge, but since the company had no firmly fixed machinery, it was held to be a floating charge. In validity of a floating charge, a floating charge remains afloat until the winding up of the company commences unless it is crystallized through the intervention of the debenture holders. But the Company Act prevents an unsecured creditor to take priority over other creditors by obtaining a floating charge when he learns that the company is going to be wound up shortly. Accordingly, Section 332 of the Companies Act provides that a floating charge which is created within 12 months immediately preceding the commencement of the winding up proceedings of the company shall be invalid unless it is proved that the company was solvent immediately after the creation of the charge 
or cash was paid to the company under the charge. Dear students, we now discuss registration of charges. Section 77 of the Companies Act 2013 requires a company to file within 30 days of the creation of the charge with the Registrar of Companies complete particulars together with the instrument, if any, creating, evidencing or modifying the charge or a verified copy thereof in the prescribed manner for registration. Otherwise, the charge shall be void and the money secured thereby shall become immediately payable. Dear students, we now discuss the remedies of debenture holders. A debenture holder who wishes to realize his security and get his money back may either exercise remedies given by the debentures without recourse to the court or take proceedings to enforce his rights. The remedies of a debenture holder depend upon the terms of the agreement with the company. A debenture holder who wishes to realize his security and get back his money may exercise remedies given by the debenture trust deed or resort to legal proceedings to enforce his legal rights. It is not necessary to allow time to the borrowing company to enable it to engage in commercial transactions for the purpose of raising funds for the redemption of debentures. One of the remedies which always remain open to them as mortgages under the Transfer of Property Act is to bring the property charge to sale. If the debenture holder is the holder of a single debenture giving a charge on the assets of the company, he will usually have an express power of sale or an implied power of sale given to mortgages under property law. This arises if the debenture is under seal and either notice requiring repayment has been served and default has been made for three months. Some interest is in area for two months. There has been a breach of some term of the debenture other than the one for payment of capital or interest. The other two remedies which are available to a debenture holder is the appointment of a receiver and the appointment of a manager. To conclude today's lecture, we have to understand that the issue of debenture plays a great role in long-term planning and decision-making. In modern, competitive era, every company needs funds for any business opportunity. This financing can be fulfilled by issuing debentures. Debentures are beneficial to companies because on one side, they create the obligation to pay interest at a fixed rate and on the other side, it causes an increase in earning per share due to comparatively less number of shares issued. Dear students, this is all with regard to today's lecture. Hope you have been able to follow the concepts that we discussed in today's lecture, namely the meaning of the term debenture, the different kinds of debentures, the different kinds of charges that are created by debentures, and the remedies that are available to debenture holders. Hope you have been able to understand. Stay blessed.